Um, can you give us your name and uh, where you're from? My name is John Crepwinkle III. I'm from Agua Caliente. Yeah. It's just lights and cameras, that's all it is. Dude. A billion lights. Yeah. How about if I, I think one's out? Like if yeah, I say... One, yeah. That's why I was, that's why I was discounted. <laughs> <laughs> There's 350 but they gave it to me for 298 because of one thing. How would I win that? Yeah, give me a second. Okay. He can edit this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, what is bird singing to you? Bird singing is, bird singing to me is just something social that we do when we all get together and, uh, you know, we tell the stories of our people and, hmm, I lost it again. I get a sense of pride when I bird sing because I'm doing what my family and my ancestors have done before me and I'm helping to carry on that tradition and those teachings. I've been singing bird for about 11 years now. Um, for Christmas one year we got CDs of my great-grandfather through the tribe and I just started mimicking and learning the words but I, I didn't have a rattle, I didn't know how to construct a rattle or anything like that. So everything I was doing was just a cappella. And when I moved back to the reservation, we were offering classes on bird singing. And I was learning from the head singer in Agua, which is Joseph Sobel. And he was open and he kind of took me into the group and taught me how to make a rattle and I've been learning from him ever since so for five years now. Can I ask me a question like why do you do something like what's your passion and why do you want to get everything right? So I, that's how I know you. You want to make everything you know the way it was in the past or you want to make it right and then you also want to share it. Can you, can you share some of that? You know I, I grew up in Northern California and I didn't get to learn about my culture. I just learned about generic Indian things. And I wanted to learn about my culture, but they didn't know how to teach me about my culture. They used to pull me out of class and make me read books from Navajo and Iroquois, Sioux. And all I really wanted to know was Kawea, and they couldn't tell me. So in this day and age, we have the opportunity to do something and we need to do it right and I'm a bit of a perfectionist I I really want to make sure that what we preserve and pass on to the future generations is correct I just want to pass it on to make sure it's preserved so that a tribal member in the future doesn't go through what I had to go through no matter how far they are I'm I'm really going to the past uh, I go to the museum quite often and I listen to the songs that they have in the archives. Uh, songs from my great-grandfather, songs from Robert Levi or Matt Pablo. And I take them home with me and I really study them. I listen to them. I listen to them quite often and I just, I really focus on the pronunciation of the words and how the rattles were done back then. Um, some people will tell you, you know, in the past we did it really slow and the way I've learned we just, we kind of do it fast, it's a newer style. But I, I do see the slower songs and I'm trying to learn the slower songs. But people nowadays, they want the faster stuff. It's easier to dance to, sometimes it's funner, it sounds a little bit more edgy and up to date.
Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, some people, you know, they, they tell you that we need to bring it back to the old ways, and some people say that we need to embrace the new ways. Um, but what we kind of have now is everybody's learning the same style, and we didn't have that in the past. You know, each village had their own style. Um, you know, different melodies, but the same words. As long as you got the words right, then you're doing it correct. As long as you're telling the story. Yeah, what are some of the benefits of practicing and preserving bird, in your opinion? Um, each tribe is starting to have their own social event, their own little fiesta, and I feel that it's it's very important because it gets us to come together as much as possible to hear the songs and spark the newer generations to want to learn and preserve it for their future generations. You have to get together and practice so that everybody's on the same page so you don't walk out there and look like you don't know what you're doing. You know, it's, it's important to have a group, but it's hard to have a group at the same time because people do have lives. And devotion is just one of those things that's hard to come by right now. Yeah, I believe that is one of the major challenges uh, for bird singing today is just the, the devotion throughout years. I mean, you can have somebody that will come along and be all about bird, but they just take it up as a hobby and not as something they want to do for the rest of their lives. I'm trying to remember what was the other question. So back back in September um, of 2013, you were involved in the um, USC production of uh, Off Track. Um, I don't know what was your experience of being a cultural advisor and helping out with that. Sure, was a producer. All right. So I was approached by a producer that wanted to learn about the Kuya culture to make sure that he had a script. Uh, so to kind of advise on their script to make sure that it was culturally sensitive and correct. And I'm, I'm a cultural preservation chairman for my tribe. When these things come to me, I do my best to kind of direct them to somebody that could help them. If I don't know the answer, I will find somebody that does. I met with Drew and he was he was very sincere and he just wanted to make sure that they got that right so that no feathers were ruffled.
Looking over the script with, he helped us kind of make changes. I put my input and the other guy put his input, but then the uh, the script had a part about a, a funeral pyre. And if you don't know how to do it, then you shouldn't do it. And it shouldn't be on camera anyway. So the other guy left. He didn't want to advise anymore. And I stuck around with the project. If it's going to be done, it's going to be done. And we might as well make what changes we can. Because you can't really ask for it to be perfect. You can just hope for the best. And I mean, I went out there for three days in the desert. Did we go out three days or two days? Oh, two days. Okay, I, I went out to the school. And you went out to LA too, so. Yeah. Two things. I went out to the school and met everybody and saw what they were doing. And I felt good about the project because everybody was respectful and they just wanted to do it correct. <coughs> so I continued with them out to the desert That's hilarious. and stayed in the, so the you know, blazing temperatures and got a tan line. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I, I was out there and I made sure that the changes that we made stuck to it and we were happy with it. Um, Derek also came out and him and Frankie Murillo and, and Joe Duro were also out there and they became extras in the film. Say it again, Derek Duro, his name is Frankie. It's, not, it's Duro, and the other one is, how is it? Frankie Maria. Frankie Maria? I knew their, I know their names. Oh, you're right. Uh, I am the director, Devin. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a producer! I am a producer! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
off track because they could have done it with anybody, but they came and asked us, the actual tribe, to help them make sure that everything was fine because they were going off of a book from so many years in the past and it wasn't updated. Off track was a little bit different. Um, a was he a producer or a director? Who? Drew. Drew was a producer. All right. So I was approached by a producer that wanted to learn about the Kuya culture to kind of advise on their script to make sure that it was culturally sensitive and correct. Is she safe now? Do you feel safe where you are? Do you need to be further away from the fire? I want to be able to shoot. Fight on set! 